done the shade. Shader's done the shade, yeah. Shader's done the shade, yeah. Done the shade. Shader's done the shade. Done the shade. Shader's done the shade, yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to a new video about shaders, GL3 shaders uh, inside Max. In this time of crisis, uh, what, what is better than um, staying home and work a bit on our shader skills? So, uh, in this video we are going to see how to apply a texture to our objects and we will see also how to apply flat shading, which basically means uh, it's basically like when we enable the smooth shading zero on our GGL grid shapes and GGL mesh objects. We will emulate the same effect. Okay, first of all, let's do one thing. Let's uh, select uh, our meshes here and let's give it a color like red so we know that these are the meshes. Sorry if I'm talking in a strange way, but I have like um, a coughing, coughing candy inside my mouth, which means like one of these candies against the coughing. Talking about viruses. So, uh, yeah. Let's change the color of these fellas to red and uh, let's also create a GGL texture object here. GGL texture, uh, GL3 shad. And let's give it a file uh, duckcm.tiff. So this is a tiff file that is already inside Max and it basically contains the texture of the duck. So let's call it duck texture. Okay, let's encapsulate all these fellas inside the sub patch. I call it duck. Let's call it duck. Let's also make it. Um, let's maybe make it another color, ducky color. And uh, okay, so now let's go inside here. Let's load bang again because the duck disappeared, of course. Okay. Let's uh, set actually the color of this object to white. So color one 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 one. Okay, let's load bang again. Okay, now we are going to apply the texture of the duck to the duck. First of all, let's give it the texture attribute here. So texture duck texture, and this uh, texture is going to be used inside the shader to apply uh, the texture to the object. Okay, so let's go inside the shaders. As always, I'm using Visual Studio. And uh, I got this question, how do you change the highlighting of the words in Visual Studio to GLSL, to highlight the GLSL syntax? You basically go down here and you select GLSL. If you don't have GLSL, it means you have to download it as a package. don't remember exactly how do you download a package in Visual Studio, but uh, that's what you have to do. Just Google download the package uh, for Visual Studio language package or something like that. And then you will have the GLSL uh, highlighting syntax. Okay, so first of all, we need to declare the texture here in our uh, parameters. So at the beginning of the shader, after our other parameters, let's go here and create the texture parameters. So the param name equal duck texture. Uh, let's call it this is also, yeah, let's call it duck texture. A texture inside the GXXS syntax used by Max is of type integer, which is basically the index of the texture. So the first texture will have index 0. So we say type int default 0. Okay, then we got a bind it here. So bind param duck texture and to the program, to the vertex program. So program bp. Oh no, silly me. We actually don't declare it in the vertex program. We declare it in the fragment program because <laughs> it doesn't make sense to use it in the vertex program. We have to use it in the fragment program because the texture decides the color of the fragment of the object, which means basically the pixel that is going to compose the object in the window. So let's go inside the fragment shader, which is this one at the end. So program FP, let's declare here a uniform. So uniform. And this is of type sampler JIT0, which is basically a max uh, uh, type uh, used inside the GXS uh, format created by Second74. So, um, yeah, let's call it duck texture. 
So this type is not, uh, you will not find this in other GLSL implementation, this is only relative to Max. It's the type of textures inside Max, sampler JIT 0. Okay. Now, to uh, get the texture, we need some texture coordinates. So it basically works like this. Back for texture color. This is equal to texture. So this function is called texture, which means it's going to read the texture. It's going to sample basically a texture based on coordinates. So the texture is called duck texture. And then we need some coordinates, which basically we will pass in from our JIT in um, structure here. So JIT in texture, we will call them texture chord zero because these are the texture for the first matrix uh, texture. Now, if we save, uh, it gives us an error because texture chord zero is not part of the struct. Let's actually create it. This is going to be a vec2 texture chord zero. Okay, and now we need to declare it also inside the uh, out structor, structure, so back to texture chord zero, right? And okay, it kind of, it's, it's already working, which is strange because we never kind of define these texture coordinates. So we actually need to define the texture coordinates inside the, the, the main function of the vertex program. Uh, before we can define the texture coordinates in uh, camera space or eye space, we need two things. First, the texture coordinates from the object, which we can get using the, the state uh, text code of the object. So let's go like this. Here, param, the beginning, param name, text, uh, let's call it like a vertex, uh, text code. Okay. Type, this is going to be a vec2. Because texture coordinates are only X and Y. Uh, they're actually called S and T. Do not confuse them with position coordinates. But they're only a vector 2. Because basically we need to read a two-dimensional image. So like a square. And this only requires a, um, a vector 2. In case the texture is two-dimensional, of course. Which most of the time is, apart from special cases. So state. This is going to be the state text code. So this is a parameter that is passed in by the application, by the max application, this is basically the texture coordinates that the model has already ins inside. So when the model was created like in uh, Maya or some Cinema 4D or something like that, it was designed, it was defined a vertex coordinate for every vertex. And this is now the parameter we are accessing. Okay, and max sends this to us. Okay, then we have to declare it here. So bin param uh, vertex text code program equal bp okay then as we said we need uh, a texture matrix which basically will transform the, mo uh, the coordinates from other space into i space okay so we need another matrix like we declared it here which is called let's call it texture matrix zero because every texture will have his own matrix so let's create uh, the first one is going to be texture matrix zero so this is a mat4 state so this also we get from max from the application and this is called texture zero matrix so this we have to write exactly like that otherwise the program will not know what we want okay so texture zero matrix. Okay, so now we need to declare this stuff inside the, the, the vertex program. So let's go here and call it uniform mat for texture matrix zero, as we called it here. Oh, I think we never binned, binned it though. So let's actually bin it uh, here. So bind param texture matrix zero program this is going to be the vertex program because then we are going to pass the coordinates transformed inside the vertex program to the fragment program okay so texture matrix we declare it here okay let's go down and actually inside the get i space uh, function let's add another another input so this is going to be an out also because we're going to to change these um, these uh, this variable that comes in 
and let's call it uh, text card. So let's modify it. Text card equals back two. So this is going to be the texture matrix zero multiplied by the back four because we need to multiply a mat four only without back four. We can multiply it with vertex text card. Uh, did I put it big or small this year? I don't remember. Small apparently, okay. So vertex text code, uh, but this is a back two, so 0 0.0, 1.0. This is uh, this we just add in order to have a back four, okay? So this is a back two vertex text code, text code, and to make a back four, we just add a couple of numbers. This we have to write it as a one, this we can write as a, as a zero, okay? So, okay, let's close this. Okay, so let's modify the calling of this function. Uh, let's first create another variable here. So i text chord zero, and uh, let's input it here. So i text chord zero, and this is now going to be modified. So let's see what it complains. Uh, undefined variable vertex text chord. Um, did we not declare it here? No, exactly. We did not declare it. So as an input, we have to declare it as well. So vertex text chord exactly as an input because it comes from the application from the object itself. Okay. So this is an attribute of the object. So these are all attributes of the object, not in the max sense of attribute, but in the shader sense of attributes, which means uh, these are all variables that change for every vertex and they come in from the application. Okay. So these are called attributes. This is S and T. Actually, we can write it like this. We can also define what is inside this stuff. So X, Y, Z, W. And here is for the normals, it's just X, Y, and Z. Okay. Okay, so now it works. It compiles, as you can see. Okay, we got the texture coordinates. We just need to output now the texture code zero. So we need to define the texture code zero. So inside here, we need to do something like that. Git out dot text code. Uh, how did we call it? Text code zero. Texture code zero. Texture code zero. It's equal to i text code zero. Okay. So we pass it down to the fragment shader by putting it inside uh, the output uh, structure. Okay, so inside the fragment shader, um, okay, we got basically now the texture color. So what we can do is simply multiply that by the light intensity. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, it worked. Okay, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about it. So we got the texture of the duck. Pretty cool. But now, as you can see, the sphere here became uh, black because it doesn't have any texture, so it's just going to be multiplied by zero. So what we need to do, and this is also how most of the 3D programs work, like Unity, for example, and Max itself under the hood, we need to basically uh, create a texture that is just going to be white and it's going to be applied to every object that doesn't really have a texture for itself. So let's create it here, GGL texture. This is going to GL3 shad. Let's call it default white. And then let's give it a default image of white. So this is going to be a white texture. Let's maybe give it a color to this object, like, uh, like a blue. Okay, and then we have to give this texture to the other object that don't really have a texture of it of it of their own. So texture default white. Let's see. Oh, okay, for the floor, for example, worked. Let's go with the with the sphere on the left. Texture default white. Okay, and there we are. There we are, we got the objects all lightened up, and now we can use texture to um, also to apply them to the other objects. For example, we can create another texture here. Uh, let's create it here. GGL texture, GL3 shad, uh, name, uh, I don't know, image uh, one. 
and uh, yeah that's it so and then we can import for example uh, or we can use for example JIT dot movie output text to one and you can say draw to a gl3 shadow okay and then we can use uh, you can give it a movie file and uh, okay then we can use this texture for example for the sphere here so let's say how did i call it image one okay yeah okay as you can see the texture is being applied to the uh to the sphere on the left okay pretty cool so this is pretty cool stuff um ah what i wanted to do is also to show how we can do the like, flat shading which basically means that uh, applying like the smooth shading zero to uh, to the object and we can do simply that by setting the word flat before the light intensity so not the texture coordinates only the light intensity this means that this uh, this, uh, this variable that is passed down to the fragment shader is not going to be interpolated and as you can see these results in this effect this is like applying smooth shading zero to an object right we have this kind of uh, tessellation uh, effect we have this kind of uh, every polygon basically will have a single color instead of the color being uh, interpolated uh, for between the vertices so we can have a version with the flat uh, keyword uh, and then a version without the flat keyword and of course they are different so we need to now of course it doesn't compile because it sees that there is an error okay uh, let me actually make the default value of the light intensity like three because one is really too low okay cool uh, okay so i think this will be all for this tutorial we saw how to apply textures uh, to the objects inside the shader which is pretty cool and uh, yeah in the next one we are going to see uh, other cool stuff so stay tuned and um, if you like the video please put a like and uh, subscribe to the channel this will be really cool and uh, if you want to uh, get some cool patches for the visuals in max you can subscribe to my patron you will also get access to the discord channel in which you can just write to me direct and it's like a little community okay thank you all for following and see you soon in the next videos keep tight in these um in these hard times try to try to uh, try to stay safe people and uh see you soon ciao everybody shadow, 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 yeah.